What's up guys, this is Chris here, and today we're gonna be talking about rifles. Specifically, this rifle. This is the rifle I chose to be a defensive gun for myself personally, and we're kinda of gonna be working it out today. This is gonna be a first shot, sort of, but it's also gonna be more of a testing and evaluation day, and I'll kinda of give you my thoughts on this uh, gun, not only for maybe for you guys and some of the parts on it, but my uh, personal use for it as a whole. So this gun was kind of, originally kitted out to be a truck gun actually for a road trip that we're gonna be doing uh, in a mountainous area. So originally this gun had an aim point on it and it's currently being switched to the Collis K18i. And uh, this is arguably one of the best scopes on the market today. Um, I've seen reviews on this from Superset CA and a few other people. Brownell sent this over for me and I put it in a Scalarworks mount and it's sitting on top of this guy. But uh, the video will be a little bit about this guy, how it performs Forms, but mostly about the gun itself. So this is a BCM Bravo Company 14.5 inch AR-15. Now it is a 14.5 in the sense that it's a 14.5 inch upper with a Surefire War Comp, M-Lock, uh, hand stop, and then the lower is actually a two-way armament. We got that on there. We got the POF trigger in there, which I'll also be testing. I, I've had this for years, but I've never taken it out for a big range day. So we're gonna try that today. And uh, we have a Magpul XL grip, Radiant Safety. I believe it's a BCM, yep, stock BCM, Ambi charging handle and uh, JP internals in the BCM upper. It's got a JP low, low mass carrier, a JP buffer system, and that should help with the controllability a little bit. Uh, I've never ran a war comp before, so that should be interesting. Um, I've always wanted one. I've never had to, the opportunity to run one, so we threw one on this. I also have the brand new Whizbang T-Rex arm sling. Initially, I wasn't very interested in it, but I have to say, after seeing a couple of people use it in classes and things like that, I was actually pretty excited about it. So I have been using it lately over the past week or so for ranch type stuff. This is another application for this gun. This gun's kind of a do-it-all gun. I wanted something that I could use for ranch use, uh, coyote use, but also home defense use. And then when we go on road trips and stuff like that, it would be cool to be able to reach out and touch stuff. And it would also be very cool to be able to use it in close, uh, you know, the truck gun philosophy is kind of an interesting thing. I'll go into it briefly, kind of what I thought about I wanted. I tried to put myself in a position of like a couple of different situations from without rule of law to riots, to being stuck in a place you want to get out of either on foot or in a vehicle. And uh, for vehicle defense, up in close vehicle stuff, through a windshield, getting out of the door quickly with it, stuff like that. You want something relatively short, but you don't want to have anything too short considering the pistol legality laws now. But I wanted something uh, short enough to be able to use in close quarters, legal in lots of places that I go to, but also have the ability to have, be ballistically capable and have a good enough capacity and range to reach out and touch stuff. And this is kind of the, the overall platform that I came to, which is what I think most people come to. I mean, if you're looking for a do-it-all rifle, everybody's like, oh, it's 11 and a half, it's 16. But the reality is it's somewhere in between for everybody, depending on which applications you're gonna use. I like the 14 and a half for a number of reasons, but mainly because it's the perfect little size for me to reach out to 500 yards but I can also do super in tight zero to five yard moving around barricades and trucks pretty easy because even though a 14 and a half is a little long for some people, I'm a pretty big dude. So uh, it's, I don't know, it just feels right to me. I like the shorter guns, but generally suppressed. Um, if I'm gonna do something serious with something, I like to have a good barrel length pop that 5.56 out, give it the ump that it wants. So yeah, we're gonna go out and shoot this today with some barricades, shoot it prone, shoot it standing, and just kind of see how we operate, see what falls apart, because I don't have anything Loctited on it yet or anything. And uh, uh, see if I like the optic. It also comes with a kickstand little spot there so I can put an offset red dot if I want, but I think the one power on the one to eight's gonna be good enough. I run the Collis K6i, it's my personal favorite optic, so I was excited about the eight. But the further up in magnification you go, the harder problem you have in CQB. So we'll test that today too. Before we do that though, I want to mention the page supporters. Thank you guys very much. I want to support the channel. It's the best way to do it. Just go down to the link in the description below and sign up. I also want to mention a link to a local shelter in Ames, Iowa. It's the YSS. It could really use your help. So please get on and click that link and donate to those kids. There's a link to our second channel, Outlaw Life as well. And again, big thanks to Brownells for sending over the scope for us to try out. We got a hit.
One, two, three. Three inches high. Kind of nice thing about a one to eight. It seems like a one to six, I'm kind of 50-50 on being able to see the bullet holes at 50 yards when I'm zeroing. But with a one to eight, an eight power scope, I can see them no problem. So that is kind of an advantage as far as my fat, lazy ass not going down there and having to look at them. Pretty good group. Went a little too far right. Two. Take it down here. Looks like we got about three quarter inch group right in the bowl. Easy breezy.
You good? All right, so now that we've shot at a distance and had no issues, I'm gonna use some of this polyfrange ammo and we're gonna shoot steel up close, kinda see how that does on a one power setting. And shoot a little bit behind cover and then go up close and maybe do a couple of fast strings. Only have like 30 or 40 rounds. Uh, that's what we were shooting at distance just a minute ago, the polyfrange. If you, if you zero with standard Federal 5.56, like what I normally do, or Fioki or, or Blazer or something like that, and then you use this uh, polymer ammo, for close range, don't be surprised if you have a zero switch because sometimes they're pretty dramatic and in the case of this rifle, it was pretty dramatic. So hopefully we'll be able to hit with the polymer ammo up close, we'll have to see. So far so good. Tell you what's not fair and well is this thing right here keeps blowing the fuck off so we're just gonna take it off because i don't need it anyway all right so first impressions of some of the gear plus the gun uh i like it so far i like the setup a lot war comp was great little bit of recoil control on top of a great flash hider works for me surefire is a known product we got the uh, surefire light on there which caused me no issues working through the barricade the uh hand stop works really well i don't use a hand stop as much to like pull the gun into me as much as i do to use it on barricades generally it's like a barricade buffer so i can smash it into it uh, a lot of times when i shoot the vtac barricade you guys ask why i always hold on to the damn thing it's because i use the cheapest possible wood that we just had in the garage at the time and it's really flimsy so a lot of times to work cover stuff i actually have to hold the freaking wall in place <laughs> not an ideal situation uh but it, it is what it is the sling worked really well the optic was fucking impressive um as i expected collis has some of the clearest glass in the whole industry if not the clearest it uses the same glass as swarovski i believe i think they're like sister companies uh the reticle is amazing um i didn't illuminate the entire time i actually forgot about it the reticle is so big and easy to orientate and use that it's no problem so even if you didn't have battery in it it's really easy to use up close as you guys saw i didn't do too much close stuff today because we ran out of range of ammo I gotta get more. Uh, you can only shoot steel with range blam up close, unless you like frag. Uh, but uh, the trigger worked really well. Uh, the gun cycled really well. I love the 14 and a half for a overall rifle. Uh, 50 to 100 yards, super easy. Up close, super good, with a lot of ballistic capability. Good dwell time, good reliability, low recoil and pulse. Overall, it functioned really, really well. I'm pretty confident with this setup up close. Uh, however, I'll probably go back and forth. That's why it's nice to have a QD system because no system is perfect. See, now with this uh, muzzle device, I can put a suppressor on if I want. So when I'm going long distance, or I think the engagements are gonna be longer distance, I can run the optic and I can QD it off and QD it on. And then when I am just doing normal, you know, going about the day stuff, I'll probably just use a red dot. I like a red dot for zero to 100 stuff, which is almost everything you're ever going to encompass, unless you plan on doing some precision rifle shooting along the way, which I do on our trip so that's why the collis is on there past 100 yards i like to have a magnified optic under it i like to have nothing uh except for a red dot but the one great thing about one eight scopes is that you can have eight power or one power and the cool thing about the collis it comes with this giant included lever but it also comes with a smaller one so uh I, it's originally a competition style optic which i'll probably use it for uh, however, you can take this giant fin off and put a more low profile one on there because the concept of a truck gun, for me, I'd like to have very little snag points. That's why I don't put vertical grips or anything on my truck guns because I don't want it to get stuck when I'm trying to pull it out of there. And that's why I also went with the T-Rex arm sling because it comes with this included bungee cord. And to me, out of all the slings I have, it runs the slickest and closest to the gun. Uh, so you can have or have not a sling as well. I like options and I like things to be out of the way when I'm not using them. And that's kind of the whole philosophy of this build. So, uh, so far so good. You'll see full reviews on all these things. Uh, I just figured you guys might want to come out to the range with me and check out some of my uh, training procedure. I just did like 120 rounds today and kind of did a lot of distance, a lot of cover stuff. And uh, I didn't do a whole lot of up close stuff. Sorry about that, but there will be uh, part two, part three in the future. If you like this video, please like and subscribe. Please help out your local homeless shelters. Remember to recycle. I'll check you later.